everybody. Um, today I have a new lap book to share with you guys. It's one of my classic um, literature units and we're going to be doing a lap book on the wind and the willows this year. And so for all of these new ones I'm going to be suggesting the classic classic start series. They're a little bit easier to read for younger readers. Um, you could also use uh, the full version, but for the ages of our kids, these actually work really well. So they are chapter books, and they're um, fun books, so they kind of inspire them to read a little bit, encourage them to get through um, a whole chapter book by themselves. So, And then to go with it, I have also created one of these lap books, and these are basically little mini books you can see and as they do each chapter they'll complete a mini book and each mini book is based on a comprehension question from the chapter that they've just read so each of these come with a study guide or a teacher's manual and it tells you what to do after you read each chapter so for example in this one you'll read chapter one and then since it's the first one you're going to prepare your lap book by doing the cover page and then you're also going to do your first little mini book and it just tells you exactly what to do cut out the mini book fold it in half inside um, in this chapter write what water rat warns the mole not um, to ever do and then in here is the answer he warns him not to ever go to the human world and so for this one, that would be this little one. So you would have your student cut it out, color it, and then inside write the answer to that question. Okay, so for this lap book, it's a trifold lap book, and I do have instructions, and I'll link the video below for you on how to make this lap book. But basically, it's just a standard um, file folder um, with one sheet taped in to give you an extra flap so that there's more room for the lap books. But this would have been normally folded down the center. I obviously can't do that right now, but, and then you just fold each side into meat. And then I glue one side of the title page to the front here, and then once it's glued, I cut along the edge and then glue the other side on so that it matches up or lines up when you fold the pages in. Um, and so each one of these little chapters each one of these lap books coordinates with a chapter and the child will write what happened in that chapter or answer a question about that chapter. So while they're making these, they're actually doing comprehension questions for whatever chapter they've just read. And then all of that information is in the teacher's guide for you. And that makes it really easy for them to do the project and for you to just double check the work without having read the book yourself. So um, as you can see, there's quite a few little lap books. There's vocabulary for any special or significant words in the book and um, I have a list of vocabulary with the definitions for you as well in there. Um, and then each one of these little books like this one asks questions about the toad. Why did, what did he lie about? What happened when the lady found out he was lying? And who helped him out of the river because she tosses him out of her boat in that chapter. But each one is just a cute little mini book to kind of help them as they read through the story remember what they've read and understand and then they can even refer back to this when they're done. It's just a fun learning tool for uh, reading through classic literature. So, And then with my other units, um, I always put some reports in there for older students. If you have younger kids doing that, um, these units, you can skip this. And um, if you have older students, it's, it's a nice way to kind of get them a little bit more challenge to the unit. So um, this one is something they'll fill out at the beginning, and this is a prediction sheet. And this one, they're going to predict where the story takes place, when it takes place, what it's about, and how it might end, and draw, draw their own cover. And that's just based on the outside of the book. Take a look at the book. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think it's going to be about? And that's just really um, a good way to talk about judging books by their cover and how you can't always do that. Um, but it's a fun little activity to see how close their predictions are to what actually happens as they go through the story. The other thing they all include is a literature timeline. And this is just like a storyboard. So as they go through through the book um, and I let them kind of just do this on their own whenever they feel like there's a specific or important event that takes place I have them just draw like a little picture they can write something in there if they prefer and so they'll just keep this and you can copy more than one sheet of this page if you need to um, and just let them kind of illustrate the main events in the story and then it also comes with a setting and plot report and these are spread out as assignments throughout the chapter um, chapters as they read but for this one they'll describe the setting the main plot the main character um, draw their own little illustration about the book and then their favorite thing about the story this one is a report on protagonists and antagonists so they'll write a little bit about both they'll write 
um, about the problem in the story, like the, the main you know issue, and then what the solution or outcome of that book is, and also a place for an illustration for that one. And then as a final book report, I always have them just do a basic little report. The author, the illustrator, a summary of the book, and then their report on it. And then I have them do another little picture of the book. And then we like to do the movie versus book. Most of them that we do have a little, you know, a Disney movie or something that kind of goes with them. And so we like to compare. So in this one, it, they note the similarities between the movie and the book, the differences. Um, did the movie characters match up with the ones in their imagination? I always like to ask that question because when you're reading books, you formulate um, an opinion or a vision in your mind, and then it's interesting to go see a movie version of that and see if it, it kind of goes with it. Um, again, there's another picture for them to draw their favorite part of the movie or book. And then just a little question about which version they liked better, the book version or the movie and why. Um, really depends on your your student. Some people are more visual and they just prefer that. Some people like the books where you know, books definitely can go into more detail and what characters are thinking and things like that. So it's always interesting to ask that question as well. So that and then the other thing that I do to our lap books, um, just as a way to house our reports, is I add another little pocket on the back. And, and all I did for that was just cut out um, a little section. I didn't even do a very good job. As you can see, it's not that straight. But I just cut out a little section of another file folder. And then using just regular packing tape, I just taped around the edges. I like to tape around the edges because then you get the full space inside the pocket, whereas if you glue or staple around the edges, um, the staples can catch on the paper, and plus it takes away some of the spacing here. And since these are like an actual 8 by 10 sheet of paper, they really just fit better if you tape it. Make sure you do that before you put on your cover. As you can see, I forgot on this one, and so I ripped my cover, so I had to kind of try and glue it down a little bit. But as long as you assemble your lap book prior, then you won't have to worry about your uh, tape going over your cover page or the bottom tape going over the books inside either. So, But anyways, that's a great way to store the reports as you go. You can also just put these reports in like a three ring binder. Um, it's totally up to you, but I like to just keep the reports with the actual lap book so everything's kind of all together and, and it's just a nice little, a nice little packet of the Wind in the Willows books. These units are available on my blog at www.confessionsofahomeschooler.com and um, if you have any questions feel free to email me as always and I hope you enjoy this unit and I hope your kids enjoy reading this, um, the Classic Starts versions of these books. They're really cute and they're a great way to get into some classic literature at a younger age. So I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you next time.